On May 27th, the startling news of what had happened to a tiny kingdom on the other side of the world was received in Washington. All through the night, lights burned in government buildings. And before the sun rose, field chiefs of the United States Intelligence Department arrived in the capital, summoned from their posts all over the world. The meeting of these men was top secret, for what had happened could be the spark that ignited another world war. And the key position of the Middle East Defense Command of the United States was at stake. Those are newsreel shots of an attempted revolt instigated by the communists, which took place 18 months ago in the kingdom of Thaman, near the mouth of the Suez Canal. The revolt was put down by the king, Ali Ben Fayed, whose sympathies are with us. That was the king himself in the final shot. Now, the film you just saw is being shown tonight in the offices of every intelligent unit of the Asia, Baghdad, Pak countries. Before I tell you why, are any of the faces in the film familiar to you? Two. Igor Antonovich and Abu Adar. They both operated out of my area when I was stationed in the Middle East. Good. Anyone else? Dan, you know anything about those two? Yeah. Antonovich was assassinated, probably because the revolt failed. Adar was shot down trying to escape from Thaman. Now, what were they doing in Thaman? They were commies sent in to stir up the revolt. The main job was to get the fringe radicals on the move. You know, the usual pattern. The pattern's been changed. Communists have found a new weapon. They've kidnapped Crown Prince Abdul, only son of King Fayed. When did this happen? Yesterday morning. Did we get the reason for the kidnapping, or is this more Pentagon locked door stuff? It was. The door's been opened. For the last five days, we've been negotiating with King Fayed for the establishing of a vital missiles base in Thaman. Now, after the kidnapping, the king received an anonymous note stating that if he called off his talks with us about the base and open negotiations with Russia, he'd get his son back. And I gather our talks have been called off. Now, Fayyid has given us two weeks to find Abdul. No Abdul, no missiles base. Now, we have no lead, no information. All we know is that Abdul was taken out of Thaman by plane. Any indication the boy's still alive? For the next two weeks, we'll just have to assume that Abdul is alive. We've formulated a theory and that's all that it is. We don't believe the boy would be hidden in Russia or in one of the satellite countries, because if it came out, the propaganda could ruin them. So that narrows it down to the free and neutral countries where he might be held. Use whatever methods or facilities you have to. No holds barred. Notify every agent in the field immediately. Just find that boy and find him fast. The field chiefs were to return to their bases of operation in various parts of the world to begin the search for the kidnapped prince. Dan Young, head of intelligence operations in the Far East, was to leave immediately for Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, the Chinese New Year was being celebrated with customary revelry. Knight was to have a tragic side for a man named Casey Reed, the undercover agent whom Dan Young would assign to finding the kidnapped prince. Just bet you pull up a chair, loosen your tie. Let's start a friendship money can't buy. Real good to see you, glad you came. Howdy, stranger, Casey Reed is my name. Casey Reed had carefully built a reputation for himself in various countries as a man who would make any kind of a deal, legal or illegal, if the price was right. This had often brought him information invaluable to the intelligence department in Washington. Have a ball. Be my guest. You're all the best. And you're welcome, one and all. So pull up a chair. Let down your hair. Though I can't say that I know you all by name. I should say that I'm mighty, mighty powerful, glad. Uh, 
Marie, they want to see him. It's important. And he can't wait. Take over, will you, hon? Hey, Steve, if you're... No, 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 no. I'm reforming. This one's a man. My name's Brooks. I heard about you. You still in business? Until my voice changes, I'm a singer. Or maybe I didn't impress you. Oh, sure, sure. You want a drink? Whiskey, whiskey. Two Irish whiskeys. Look, Reed. I've got something to sell. And this song? I'm the one who wants to do the singing. Reed. I need money to get out of Hong Kong. If I don't get it, I'm dead. Very dead. Look, pal, I'll do anything to make a quick butt, but if you're running away from the cops, I... I'm not. Look, Reed, I don't have time to kick this around. 500 bucks and you find out what I know. 500 bucks? That's about loot. This is bigger than anything you ever bought before. How about it? Meet me in the alley, back of Sung Ho's chain shop, in a few minutes. What's the matter with right here and now? I can't. I'm a target in this place. I'm on borrowed time right this minute. Okay? All right, I'll meet you in the alley. For five Cs, it better be the extra large economy, sir. Okay, okay. the suicide of Dennis Brooks' killer, the news of the disappearance of the prince finally was released. Meanwhile, Dan Young was bringing Reed a strange report concerning the murdered Dennis Brooks. With Dan Young was John Blanchard of British intelligence, for Brooks had proved to be an English subject. Complete file on uh, Dennis Brooks. Dennis Brooks, huh? Does this mean anything to us? Read that paragraph. 
He's flying for an oil company at Thayman. Yeah. Quit his job and disappeared a week ago. Even more interesting, he's been known to be associating with a gal called Elena Martin. Elena Martin? In Thayman? Yeah. Well, what do you know? You, uh, you know her? Well, only by reputation. She usually operates in Macau. As a matter of fact, she was tied in with that syndicate. You remember the gold smuggling syndicate that was broken up by the British Customs about a year ago? That's right. She's been in Thayman for three months. But now she's reported to be back in Macau. Brooks and Elena Martin. Uh -huh. hmm. I wonder if that means anything to us. Yeah, that's what we'd like to know. Now, uh, how soon can you get to Macau? Well, it's about 40 miles by water. Of course, I'd have to get out of my contract at Frisco Joe's well, work. Don't waste any time. We don't have it. You know, I just can't walk in on this thing without an angle. Well, get one. Oh, Dan. Yeah. You know, this thing's too hot. I, I can't take Faye with me. Faye? To my accompanist. She doesn't know what I do or what's going on. She doesn't get paid to get herself killed. Well, you work it out any way you want, Casey. You're on your own. Oh, uh, Blanchard will go along with you. Anything you learn, you can pass on to us through him. And remember, you keep your guard up. You're not getting paid to get killed either. The search for the kidnapped prince was becoming more intense. For Casey Reed, U.S. intelligence agent, it meant opening new doors and closing the old ones of his own personal life. Casey, you're not going to do this to me again. Honey, it's like I said. The deal came all real big. Yeah. You don't walk away from a chance to a mint, you know. But you walked away in Paris and West Berlin and Tangier oh, and no, London no, and all... Wait a minute. Hold your horses. It's a break for you. I'm giving you the act. You'll be a single. You really do want to get rid of me, don't you, Casey? Oh, now, Faye, you know better than that. Do me a favor, will you? Would you just ride this one out? I'll cut you in on the big pail. Darn it. Yeah, let me have it. You won't have to wear junk like this. From now on, it'll be strictly the real thing. Mm -hmm. Of course, darling. Just eight carat diamonds set in 14 carat gold. Out of my way, honey. I'll go better than that. The fillings in your teeth will be 24 carat. In the mouths of babes. Reed knew he needed an angle to get to Elena Martin, who had known Dennis Brooks in Thayman. A cheap piece of costume jewelry gave him that angle. For Elena Martin had been involved in gold smuggling operations in Macau. And gold can be made to look like cheap costume jewelry. On arriving in Macau, Reed spent a full, precious day trying to locate Elena Martin. No one, it seemed, had ever heard of her. But he also knew he had to ask enough questions to make himself conspicuous. What do you have, senor? Oh, uh, Irish whiskey, double. It's all for you, if your memory's good. My memory, senor? Yep. I'm conducting a poll, trying to find out how many people never heard of Elena Martin. Who, senor? Elena Martin. Do a dog act in the cat school. Never heard the name. Yeah. If uh, you ever get to the cat schools, look me up. Reed realized that he was stirring up trouble. He could not know how soon that trouble would catch up with him.
I see you are still alive. Are you sure? These are yours. Now, Mr. Reed, what do you want with Elena Martin? You have to uh, open my skull just to ask me that? You will answer me, Mr. Reed. My mother taught me never to talk to strangers. Oh, put that thing away, will you? I am Chung, manager of the club, Jiki. What does that make you to Helena Martin? Let us say I represent her interests. Oh, that's fine. Ooh. Well, then, in that case, you just tell her that I've got a deal she'd be very interested in. You do not know Elena Martin, yet you bring this deal to her. Dennis Brooks, Noah. Then why is this Brooks not here? Because he found it too hard getting off the slab at the morgue. Look, pal, I've been pushed around more than I like. If you want to kick a billion dollar deal out of the window, it's okay by me. You just tell this Elena Martin that you've been reading the wrong fortune cookies. Uh, Mr. Reed. You will go to your hotel. And I will let you know if Elena will see you. I'll see you around the flop house. Reed had finally made an important contact. The man known as Chung, proprietor of the club Jiki, knew where and how Elena Martin could be reached. She doesn't take in laundry. You wait here, please. That is the beloved goddess of mercy, Kuan Yin. Beautiful, is she not, Mr. Reed? I like to walk and talk in kind myself. Please sit down. Would you like a drink? Irish whiskey. Chung. Chung tells me you were a friend of uh, Dennis Brooks. Business partner. I didn't know Dennis knew anything about business. He didn't. He went out of business before he could open the store. I was sorry to hear of his death. He should have been. You were the store. The one place we could do business. And uh, just what were you going to sell? Gold, tons of it, all solid, worth millions every year. What makes you think we'd be interested? Look, honey, I didn't come here to play games. Either you want in or you don't. We're listening. Okay. Are the Reds still willing to buy all the gold we can bring across the China border? I'm sure they'd be. But to get gold into China, one must first take it to Hong Kong. And that is not possible. British customs has become too clever. Honest people are smart. Crooks are clever. I figured this was real clever. This is nothing but a piece of imitation jewelry, the kind sold on the streets of Macau. That's right, thousands of them every day. Souvenirs, just the kind of junk tourists bring back to Hong Kong. Now you watch this. Gold. Solid. Enough of this stuff and you can buy your own country. Please go on. There's a British customs regulation against bringing gold bullion into Hong Kong. However, there are no restrictions against souvenir jewelry. That is true. Now, we make up thousands of these and have our own tourists buy them and 
carry them back into Hong Kong under the nose of British customs. Now that you've given us your plan, what is to prevent us from carrying it through by ourselves? Because that customs man in Hong Kong happens to be in my pocket, not yours. One double cross and you wind up with nothing. Mr. Reed is more than just a singer. We will discuss your suggestions further. More talk. I'm ready to get started whenever you are. As in everything else, Mr. Reed, there are channels to go through. What channels? I'm not cutting anybody else in. You'll do exactly as I say, or there is no deal. Okay, friend. Let's discuss when we do it and with whom. You'll be told in due time. Like I said, I'm ready to get started whenever you are. Reed's scheme brought a quick response, for now he was to meet the man who had controlled the gold smuggling operation. He could only hope that following the trail of Elena Martin and the smuggling ring would lead him to the missing prince. Ah, Mr. Reed. Sit down. You must be the head boy. Elena tells me that you're a man in a hurry. We both know where we stand. Oh, we do indeed. My name is Owen Howard. I'm in the business of distributing fine Scots whiskies here. Cigarette? Thank you. Well, now, enough of that. We will dispense with other pleasantries. Gold is the most pleasant thing I can think of. I have checked on every facet of your plan. It will work. I have already selected a jeweler who will make your first gold trinkets for the shipment. You work fast. Are you sure you can buy up enough bullion to melt down for that jewelry? Oh, yes. And I have a surprise for you. You will take the first shipment to Hong Kong yourself. Do you think you have to test me? Oh, come now. You're being rather sensitive, old man. One thing I couldn't check up on was your friend, the customs officer in Hong Kong. If you get across safely with the first shipment, then we will start the full-scale operation. How do you know you can trust me with all that loot? I assure you, we have taken the necessary precautions. Huh. Yes, I'm assured. Tell me, are you positive you can uh, find enough kami customers in China to buy that stuff? When we have cash customers, I do not question their politics, Mr. Reed. Oh, now you're getting sensitive. No, I never mentioned a word about politics. Oh, of course, you were only talking about the customers. They will take every ounce of gold we can get across the border. When do I make the trip? You'll be notified. In the meantime, I will secure a work visa for you. Work visa? A man of your reputation to remain in Macau without attracting police attention must have a job. Such as? Well, you're a singer. I'll have Chung arrange for you to sing right here in the club jiggy. Right where you can watch me. Oh, just another of our precautions, Mr. Reed. Mm. Would you mind telling me what the others are? Yes, I would. Good night, Mr. Reed. Good night, Mr. Howard. Blanchard knew that Casey Reed was being watched constantly. He could take no chance that any contact he made with Reed was noticed. What is it? Casey? How'd you get up here? I've been watching the street. I found a back door. Better for both of us if no one can connect us up. Good thinking. You got a report from Dan yet? 
Yeah, and it looks pretty hopeless. Hasn't been a lead on the prints anywhere. Anything you want me to pass on to Dan Young? I don't know whether I've been chasing my own tail or not, but they went for the gold setup. And I've also got the key to uh, Elena's heart. The one thing that disturbs me, though, is I haven't got a single indication that they've ever even heard of Abdul. Well, yours is the only chance we have. You'd better stay with him. They tell me I'm to take the first shipment to Hong Kong. Do me a favor, would you? Get me a rundown on a guy named Owen Howard without stirring anything up. Now, uh, who's he? One of the wheels in the gold setup. He gives orders. Uh, if he's a British subject, the consul might have a thought or two. Fine. If you run into anything interesting, contact me tonight at the club. All right, I'll do that. The request by the British agent John Blanchard concerning Owen Howard was received in the intelligence office in London. supplied a list of the visas Howard got last year. It's a lot of them. Well, the whiskey salesman do a lot of traveling. And Jordan? Jordan? Yeah. Notice the date. And that's the week the communists tried to overthrow the Jordan government. And I doubt if Howard was selling a lot of Scotch whiskey at a time like that. You better get back to Hong Kong real fast. See if Inspector Haver has anything on this Howard fellow. Also cable your home office in London, see if they got anything on the mayor. All right, I'll take the night board. I got a key for your hotel room we keep in Hong Kong just for this purpose. I'll call you that later. That warehouse seem a little more important to you now? Are you kidding? I'd like to find out just how much more important right now. All right, I'll wait for your call. Howard's warehouse on the Macau waterfront assumed immediate importance for Casey Reed. For Howard's presence in Jordan at the time of the uprising could mean that he was a link in the communist espionage chain.
should be back before this. What are you doing here? Oh, Casey, I've been waiting here two hours to ask you that. But this is the one place I don't want you to be. You mean that you'd, you'd have me grabbed off the streets and you can say that? Now, wait a minute. If that's what happened, it wasn't my idea. You've got to believe me. Frankly, it didn't seem like your technique for getting a woman. What's happening, Casey? Who did it? Your boss, Tan Chung. What did he tell you? Well, he said that you wanted me to work in the act with you. He was lying. All right. They can't make us work together, can they, Casey? <laughs> Not even the musicians' union could do that. No, that's not what I meant. I just meant that your being here means... means you're in trouble. Your trouble? Yeah, but I asked for it. You didn't. That big deal that you talked about so much? Yep. It's a mess. Well, then why don't we forget about it? Why don't we go back to Hong Kong? Well, it's a free world, isn't it? Some parts, huh? And for some people, yes. But we're not any of those people right now. Casey, do you mean that you can't leave Mikhail? You've been in some bad jams before, Look, but honey, something like honey, this... Honey, I... if you kissed me now, could you forget some of those questions that I can't answer? You could try and see, Casey. It's a little late, isn't it? Couldn't it keep till tomorrow morning? Okay, if it's important. You know, it's a fine time to talk a business deal. Right away. Who was it, Elena? Well, how'd you know that? She phoned earlier. I said that I'd tell him when he came in. They always call back, don't they, Casey? Oh, no, wait a minute. This is business. Most women fall in love with men who go to offices or who build bridges or run grocery stores. I can't stores. give you any answers, so don't try to con me into any. And don't try to leave my cow. I'll never let you get out of here. All right?
My very precious Casey. Very cute. Very cute. I thought you'd be pleased to find your pretty little accompanist in Macau. Howard takes all kinds of precautions, doesn't he? Howard's a very careful man. He knew that if he had Miss Wells here, you'd be sure to come back. Come back? Where am I going? The gold shipment's ready. You'll take it to Hong Kong tomorrow. How much? It should get 50,000 on the black market. 50,000? Whoa. When Howard makes a test run, he really tests. When do I pick up this stuff? Now. You'll find it heavy. Quite heavy. To lift 50,000 bucks, I'd even grow a new set of muscles. Wow. Where do I drop the stuff off? Kami headquarters, Hong Kong? Once you're there, you'll be notified and paid in cash. That's all you have to know. You know, you'd make a good wife. You don't talk much. Think about me while I'm gone. That'll keep the, the home fires burning. Hmm. Metal. Is that all that is gone? That's all. Yes. This is Howard, Chief. From Hong Kong. Blanchard. Uh, yeah, what does this fellow Blanchard look like? I'll do that. Don't worry. Goodbye. British intelligence in London have had a request for information about me. Brewster intercepted it? Yes. Who is this Blanchard? John Blanchard. A British agent assigned to the kidnapping case. The cable came from Hong Kong. Find him. You think he might be the one? I want this man within 24 hours. Get him. Hello? Casey? Yeah, this is John. Oh, yeah, I see. He'll be back on the night boat with the jewelry. Tell him I want to see him then. Dan's here. He wants to see you as soon as you get back. Oh, listen, I got that report on Howard from London. Yeah, everything seems to be in order. He was born in Bristol, went to the usual English schools. He worked in the distillery, came out to Marco five years ago. From all accounts, he's a pretty solid, respectable citizen. Listen, you got to the warehouse? Been the small metal attached underneath Howard's desk drawer. Now, if it doesn't mean anything, why'd he hide it? How's it made? Yeah, all right, we'll look at it when you get back here. Bye, Casey. Found some kind of medallion in Owen Howard's warehouse. Medallion? He say what it looks like? Only that it had a palm tree design on it. Get him back on the phone. Your operator, give me that Macau number again. 17467, hurry, please. What is it? A palm tree medallion is described in the personal effects found on Prince Abdul at the time he was kidnapped. Well, this could be it, Dan. If anyone over there finds out that Casey has that medal, he's a dead man. Hurry up with that call. Operator, hurry up, will you? Tell him you'll be at the boat dock when he gets in. He's to transfer the medal to you. All right. Operator, that Marco line, 17467. Hurry, please. <laughs> Reed arrived in Hong Kong with the first shipment of smuggled gold. As he had said he would, Owen Howard had taken the necessary precautions. John Blanchard, realizing that almost certain death was in store for anyone in possession of the medallion, waited until the right moment to contact Reed. He couldn't know, of course, that the communists were already on his trail. How's that for solving the souvenir problem? All that junk for 22 bucks. 
the customs inspector, actually another British agent, was present to pass Reed through customs with his illicit shipment. You uh, have a light? Mr. Blanchard, you'll be very wise not to make any noise. Get in the car. Casey? Yeah. Now wait. I know. I had to wait till they contacted me. Then I'd lose this guy they had on my tail. Blanchard met you at the dock? Yeah, I gave him the medal. But isn't he here? No, no. He's delivering it to Haver. It'll be safe at headquarters. Uh, police headquarters, please. Inspector Haver. I don't like Blanchard being late. Oh, hello, Inspector. Dan Young. Has Blanchard left there yet? You sure? No, no, I couldn't say as yet. Yes. Thanks, Inspector. Bye. He isn't there. No. You better get back to Macau and schedule. I'll do the worrying about Blanchard. Right, Dan. You better do a lot of worrying. He's a pretty good boy. Mm. Where's Chum? Not here, senor. When he gets in, tell him I'll be in my dressing room. Hiya, baby. You've been waiting for me? I'm the one who's been waiting, Mr. Reed. Matter of fact, I've been waiting a long time. Ever since Faye broke a date with me in Paris when you two were there last January. You've got to be Frank Page. Uh, you know, she's been chewing my ear off about you for months. All good, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> you have any excuse for missing last night's performance? Oh, yes, a beaut. Can't stand to hear myself sing. <laughs> what are you doing in this disposal of civilization? Well, I'm with the Defense Department. Guided missiles. Well, you're traveling an important company, huh? It's funny how I caught up with Faye. Heard she was in Hong Kong, only she wasn't. Just luck I found out she was over here. For a guy who only had a broken date with Faye as a memory, you've come a long way. Look, are you sure I'm not butting in? I mean, well, you two work together. Well, you're quite wrong, Frank. Casey and I play together. Psalms and piano, that is. His working interests are elsewhere. For a gal who plays a good piano, you should stick to one key. I promise you, this date won't be broken. Good, I'll pick you up later. Bye, Casey. I'll see you. Bye. Bye. You find it hard to believe me about Elena, huh? What difference does it make, Casey? If it's not Elena, it'll be somebody else. I've had it. I want out. For your sake, hon, I, I wish it could be any way you want. But it can't be. Not now. So you still won't give me any answers. So, someday, honey. Come in. Mr. Reed, you will come with me, please. What about the show? Miss Wells will handle it. Again? I can't help it, honey. He's the show. Now, Reed, come on in. I have somebody here that I want you to meet. 
Meet Mr. Blanchard, practically a business associate. What is this? You're cutting another guy in. Not exactly. Mr. Blanchard claims that the gold souvenir idea was his and not yours. His and Dennis Brooks. He claims that you stole it. Now, you wouldn't do a thing like that, would you? Well, he's out of his mind. Dennis and I dreamed this gag up together. I never saw this character before in my life. That's not a very good memory you have, old man. Mr. Blanchard lit your cigarette for you last night on the dock in Hong Kong. Well, is he the guy? You know, you look different with your hat off. Oh, you're not getting rid of me like that. I still want my cut. Then how do you come to be in possession of this? Well, I knew you were making the jewelry. I broke in here last night looking for it. All I found was that. Come now, let's stop playing games. Mr. Blanchard is a British agent. Agent? Intelligence. Are you sure? I have all the proof that I need. Yeah. You know, it, it, it might work. He heard Dennis talk about the gold deal. When Dennis was killed, he followed me to Macau. That's what it was. That's the way we had it figured. But then, that's not our affair. But yours, Mr. Reed. What does that add up to? Well, we don't know very much about you. I would like you to prove a point for me. Well, what are your jokers driving at? Well, uh, Mr. Blanchard is a British agent, and you are reported to have no love for the law. I would suggest that you take careful aim and pull the trigger. Oh, oh wait a minute, you know, I never knocked off anybody in my life. Well, would you rather we believe that you do have a love for the law, Mr. Reed? Aren't you going to thank us for saving you? He almost got you. Yeah. He sure moved quick, didn't he? How'd you find out about him? How doesn't matter. Only that we did. Now, I suggest that you go back to the club and forget what you just saw. With the death of Blanchard, the Communists had a clear road to successful culmination of their plans. No further obstacles stood in their way. When will you be ready, Linoff? By noon, the day of the deadline. Will that fit your schedule, Yusef? The people I have selected hold key positions in Fayed's government. Once the treaty is signed, Linoff's men will stir up mass demonstrations for a people's front. Faid will be forced out of power, and we will seize control. An excellent report, gentlemen. Let's keep it that way on every level. We cannot afford a repetition of our failure in Jordan. Our greatest danger is the kidnapping itself. We are aware of that. Russia's hold on some of our Arabian countries has been strengthened by the success of the outer space program. We cannot afford to turn world opinion against us now. An excellent speech, Yusef. Thank you. The last link has been forged. We have our kidnapper and on schedule. An American? Yes. 
When I get word from my superior that Faid has rejected the Western Treaty and signed ours, the bodies of Abdul and the American will be found by the police. There will be no doubt that the Yank was the kidnapper. I see. All right, call me back if there's been any change. Faid refuses to wait any longer. He's signing the Russian treaty at midnight. Almost midnight here. That means we have until 5 a.m. Our time is five hours ahead of Thayman. Yeah, five hours. Well, it would take five days to search this place properly. Doesn't Faye know that the Russians don't just want a missile base, they want the whole country. And he wants his son back, Casey. I'd hate to have to make that kind of a decision. Ever watch a country become a slave state, Casey? I have. Happens like that. One minute there's a free, self-respecting government. And the curtain falls and the show's over. What do we do for the next five hours? Sweat it out and let it happen? I don't know, Case. Every agent in the area has been called into macabre. French, British, police, us. Maybe something will break. Just in case it does break, I want to make sure that Faye's okay. I'll get her away from the club and bring her here. As soon as we can, we'll take her back to Hong Kong. Maybe I ought to go with you. No, no, we stay here. They know you, they don't know me. You wait here for my call. Time was getting short. Dan Young realized the showdown had to be soon. He would have to move fast if Faye Wells was to be taken safely out of Macau. Where's Miss Wells? It's between shows, senor. She's probably in her dressing room. Thank you. Well, it's about... Sorry, I thought you'd be Miss Wells. Just dropped by to say hello. I'm an old friend. So am I. Come on in. Thanks. Faye and I had a date. Faye's been late before, but never like this. Oh, I'm Frank Page. Dan Young. Been through the uh, Middle East much? Uh, just a few times. Why do you ask? Oh, I don't know. I thought we might have met somewhere. Uh, it's possible. I'm an engineer. Helped set up one of those missile bases and... <sighs> Sorry, top secret. You, uh, you going to stay a while? I suppose. Would you tell Faye to expect a call from me? Be glad to. Thank you. Something had occurred suddenly to Dan Young. It was a long shot, but Young knew that long shots sometimes pay off in big odds. Yeah? Oh, Elena. Hi, baby. No, oh, I just didn't expect to hear from you, that's all. Real big, huh? The biggest deal yet. Yes. I'll come by for you. That sounds great. I'll be waiting downstairs for you. Keep moving. Look, honey, if you're tired of my singing... Down the stairs. Happy days.
of a double cross is this? You characters think you can pull a gold deal without me? You're out of your mind. Sit down. Your position will become clear any moment now. Okay. I'll play it straight for you. How will it become clear? The phone will ring. Hello? Yes, I'm sure he would. It's for you, Mr. Reed. This is Reed. Casey, this is Faye. What kind of a bind are you in? They said that you sent for me, but then they brought me here. Where are you? The Grand Eastern Hotel, room 310. Well, that's where I am. You were cut off, Mr. Reed. Are you all off your rockers? What are you doing with Faye? No one wants to bring any harm to Miss Wells, Mr. Reed. However, you're the only person who can decide that. Open the door. Mr. Reed, may I present His Royal Highness, Crown Prince Abdul of Thamen. Okay, so the kid's a prince. Where does it get us? In half an hour, it will be five in the morning. A few thousand miles to the west, an old man will sign his name to a piece of paper. No kidding. What does he do for an encore? You should be very interested in that piece of paper, Mr. Reed. Why? It's your death warrant. Are you jokers on the level? And if you should care for the dubious honor, you and the prince will die together. The kid? Oh, now look. Someone has to be responsible for his kidnapping. If he were left alive and could say who was really responsible, that wouldn't do, would it? Oh, that's real smart, real smart. You rig it so that an American takes the rap instead of a Russian. An excellent idea, if I might say so. Yeah. What kind of an act are you going to get at the Jiki to replace me? A dancing bear that looks like Stalin? You haven't much time left to learn respect, Mr. Reed. When the paper is signed, the phone will ring. When it does, it will give me great pleasure to kill you. The film he had seen in Washington suddenly became vitally important to Dan Young, for there was a face he thought he remembered. Long distance. Paris, France. Trocadero. Seven, four, five, six, eight. You sure you're going to get that phone call? I'm very sure, Mr. Reed. Mind if I take a stretch? Walk slowly, very slowly.
have but about three minutes to wait. Yes, operator? Yes, I called Paris. Put them on. Uh-huh. You do have a file. Good. Read it to me. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. Thanks. Have Interpol notify our FBI at once. Right. Goodbye. Something must be wrong. It can't be. Not now. Everything has gone too well. It's already 13 minutes past five. Four, five, two, four, please. Four. 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 F Something's gone wrong with the phone. Get up. Get up! Jumpy. We can't wait. I'll use the phone upstairs. Don't take your eyes off him. And don't forget, we've got your young lady upstairs. Well, don't get brave, Casey. Remember what Howard said about Faye. to the end. How'd he get into this? The All-American Rat. This is the guy who was calling the signals for the Connie outfit. Oh? It's her boyfriend. Would you mind telling me what's going on around here? Go ahead, tell her. Dad thinks you're entitled to the truth, and I agree with him. We'll have a cup of coffee, hon, and I'll tell you the story of my life. Well, I'm doing you safe now, and you're going to go back to your father. You don't know what I'm talking about, do you? That writes off the base and tame and we're beyond the deadline. Ah. Uh -huh. Abdul was the key to the whole situation. Once he tells the truth to the world about his kidnapping, the Russians will have to get out of Thaman. They'll have no choice. Let's get that coffee. Yeah, let's get that, uh... Thaman is a tiny dot on the world map. Let's hope our new missile base there may never be needed for war. But the significant thing is, if ever it is needed, we have it. <laughs> <laughs>